Hi, this is Miss Slinton, and this is the HBio final review um, for semester one. So we're listening in right here. First thing I want to talk to you about is protocol of your exam. I actually changed it around 4:35 this morning, and I like it better. Zero period already knows because I already talked to them about it. But it was important to me that I let you shine in different areas. And I worry that if I ask a specific question, like on the group, and it's, let's say, your class period, your group didn't understand that one thing. And if you'd only gotten period four's question they got on that, then you would have, do you see what I'm saying? I, wa I wanted it to have some voice and choice in there. So the way I wrote your group part of your final, which is what you're taking tomorrow, is I asked two questions from each of the four, four units, but you only have to pick one of them to answer. So for instance, like if you look, see, see? Nice. See how I did that? So you know how I had like guiding questions, like if you pull up a calendar, right? If you, if you look at your, for instance, I'm looking right now at your, no, I'm looking at physics. Where it is this, that is also, okay, here we go. So if I look at the guiding question for unit um, three, I'm looking at unit three, remember that? That was the unit before this. And there's a question, um, how do cells regulate their energy processes and metabolism in order to maintain homeostasis? So I would say that, but then I would help you and I'd say, okay, this is what I want you to know. Um, tell me how, what is the role of enzymes and what are some factors that affect it? So that might be one question, and then I'd go in the same unit, unit three, and I'd go to how is light tra energy trapped and converted into chemical energy during photosynthesis? Then I'd go down to one of the objectives below it, the essential understanding, and I would say, describe for me the light reaction. So you would get both of those questions for the unit three section, but you as a team get to decide which one of those you want to answer. You don't answer both. And I did that for unit one and unit two and unit and unit four. Okay, so those are your first four. Yes? Uh, how many points is it worth? Okay, so each, your it's double, you know, like a regular test, that would be worth 25, your written part. This time it's gonna be worth 50, okay? So that's four questions. So you, um, you know, because you pick, do I wanna do question one or question two for this one? Do I wanna do question one or question two? I think it actually says A, B, right? You want to do A or B for question for unit three and A or B question for unit four. Don't, what I just, I'm telling you this ahead of time because I don't want you, you know what some people will do is like, oh, we have to answer both. But it says in big, one, pick one to answer. Okay? So each of those is worth 10 points. So that's 40 points right there. The last, the fifth question is this. There are multiple labs we did this semester. Okay? I will give your particular class period, it's different for all the class periods, let's say I give zero period, these enzyme lab and cell membrane lab. I don't know, I'm just picking on two labs. And I'll say, pick one of those two labs that you wanna tell me about. Do the flow chart for me, you know, explain to me and give me a little flow chart so I understand you know what you did in the lab. Then make a claim, tell me what evidence you're using to base your claim, and then give me a reason. Um, for that trend statement of that claim, right? Claim evidence reason. So what you might want to do when you're reviewing for your labs is go, okay, could I do a simple flow chart for this lab? Could I do a claim evidence reason trend statement? That's stuff you can prepare ahead of time as you're reviewing. Hopefully you've been reviewing your labs. And now just do that to kind of summarize it up. And so you'll have a choice then on that fifth question. So 10, 20, 30, 40 points, right? And then your last one comes from a lab. That'll be your group part, and that's 50 points. Then the multiple choice part that you're gonna take during um, um, finals week, I will ask you 80 questions total. It's better if I ask you more. I haven't written it yet, so I gotta get 80. I'm not to 80 questions yet. I'm partly there. Once I have 80 questions, then that way each one's gonna be worth two points. Just like I do for your, um, um, regular exams, you can earn above and beyond. That's basically the curve. So you could take um, um, 80 questions times two is how many points? 160. You could get 50 points from the group. What's 160 and 50? 210. So you can get 210 out of 200 on your final if you got 
every single thing right. Questions or concerns about that? Yes. So is there no additional objective? The only additional objective could be out of unit four. No, I didn't oh. ask a single one. <laughs> I already wrote it, so I thought there's not a single additional objective question in there. Remember she promised? <laughs> She promised. She promised. Remember, she promised. No, she promised. Something. No, and I promised you, and I didn't even bother doing that. I didn't even ask one additional objective. <laughs> so not even on the test or the group. Like, um, I haven't finished the multiple choice part, yes. but I'm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Truth be told, does that make you sad? Are you a little disappointed in me? Can we find group? Okay. So, to me, how would I? How would I approach this? For the group part, I would go through and be going, okay, every one of those, I ask two or three guiding questions per unit, right? You're not answering that bigger topic. You're doing the essential understanding. Look at each one of those and go, could I do this? Could I do this? What's this about? Could I do this? Remember, these are Google Docs. So you could copy and paste it and make that your study guide, right? You've had it all along. I've told you what's important. This is what I've been testing on. Just write yourself a couple notes, like this is about this, or this is about that, or however you want to do it, okay? Then your multiple choice, I'm writing it right off of those as well. Those questions are gonna come right out of there like they have the whole time, okay? Now, that, that's the big thing I have to tell you. And then I'm here, if you want me to, I can go over any particular topic that you would like. I can't review a whole semester, you know, in 30 minutes. But are there particular things that you would like me to go over today that you're a little nervous about? Start thinking about that, and I will go over those with you. Yes? The cycles. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, so do you mean cycles as in the phosphorus cycle? And nitrogen? Okay, so let's go over that first. Okay, so um, what's, the, what's the first cycle we discussed? Water. Water, Water. okay. Cycles. cycles. Hi, right. <coughs> okay, so water cycle. That's probably the easiest cycle to remember, right? So water cycle, you can what? What can happen? I'm doing it right now. Precipitation, good. What's the word for when it comes out of the open stomata of plants? Transpiration. When it goes from a gas to a liquid, con, con yeah, or sublimation, is that what you're gonna say? Perfect. Wow. I don't know if you're gonna say that or not. And it gathers in, <laughs> what do you call underground bodies of water? Aquifers. Aquifers, Aquifers. good. And then how does man interrupt those cycles? Right. Water pollution. Water. Pretty much pollution is the answer to all things on this cycle. Yeah. What does man do? Pollute, you know, it's pretty much, good answer, okay? <laughs> all right. Um, are you good with water cycle? That's pretty, pretty yeah, easy. Yeah. Okay, what's the next cycle you want to do? Uh, nitrogen. nitrogen. Okay, let's do nitrogen. Okay, on the nitrogen cycle. Okay, so nitrogen is in the air, and remember we do nitrogen fixation. fixation. So nitrogen fixation, night fix, it makes it go into what? Ammonia. Ammonia. Who does that? Nitrogen fixing bacteria. So you're fixing the nitrogen into a solid. Then you can convert this to NO2 minus, which would, and then to NO3 minus, which you knew as nitrite and what? Nitrate. Nitrate. You serve it up on a tray, remember that part? Yeah. And that's called what? What's this process right here, going across here? Nitrification. Nitrification. Nitrification, good. And then you could return it from nitrate up into the air again into N2, what's that called? Denitrification. Denitrification. Good, who can use nitrate? I'm kind of running out of room. Who can use plants. nitrate? Plants. And then who can eat those plants? Animals, Animals. it's very messy. Okay, and then what can happen to those plants and animals? They die. They die and decomposers <laughs> break them back into ammonia again, right? Okay, so let's do the whole song now that we reviewed it, okay? So, oh, okay. 
The song's on YouTube, right? So you can go get it or Instagram. So we're gonna do nitrogen fixation by nitrogen fixing bacteria. Then we do nitrification, first nitrite, then nitrate. What's another way we can get nitrate? Right? Atmospheric fixation, and what's another way we can get it? Man-made, good, good. So we have nitrate, then we can give it to plants, and then animal can eat the plants, and then the plants and the animals can die, and then who works on it? Decomposers back into ammonia. And then you can do nitrification first, nitrite by nitrifying bacteria, then nitrate, and then we can do denitrification, which takes the NH3 and puts it back up into the outside, the atmosphere. Okay, questions on that? How does man screw that up? Always. Pollution. Good job. <laughs> okay. What's another one? Phosphorus. Phosphorus cycle. Good. So what's the reservoir for phosphorus in the rocks? What gets it out of the rocks? Weathering or man. Man can get it out, right? So weathering. And then it's a limiting factor. So normally you don't have too much of it because all, all organisms need it, and it's, there's not that much of it available. And so it goes from being in the water into being in yeah. plants and then animals. animals. And it can just stay. It can get decomposed and re-picked up again, or it can form rock again. When man gets involved, you can have an algal bloom, bloom and over-enrichment, eutrophication, and death of a lake. Good? What's another cycle? Carbon cycle. That's the other cycle you need to know. Okay, so the carbon cycle, there's only one thing, one part of the carbon cycle that takes it out of the air, takes CO2 out of the air, and fixes it. What's that called? Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. And which reaction of photosynthesis? Dark reaction. Or the Calvin cycle. Or the light independent reaction. <coughs> so that's the only thing that takes it out of the air. Everything else generates CO2. Cellular respiration. Anytime you burn carbon, whether you're an automobile or a person or a decomposer, you're going to release CO2 out into the atmosphere. Whether man does it artificially through combustion, or we do it, we're increasing the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. And so that can be out of balance by all the CO2 we're putting in the atmosphere, which can lead to global warming and climate change. Okay. Questions on that one? Okay, next topic you would like me to review. Name a topic. Photosynthesis. Okay, let's do yes. photosynthesis. Ready? Here we go. Water, 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 water. So there's the <laughs> light reaction, right? And then there's the dark reaction. Right, okay. So let's focus just on the light reaction first. Here we go. Water, 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 water. What are we going to do? Break it in half. What do we get? Oxygen and electrons. Sweep, sweep. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. And it gets the electrons excited. Try and do it. You asked for it. And you make some ATP. <coughs> mm. Now we're in photosystem one, right? We were in photosystem two? Okay. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. And it gets the electrons excited. Na -na 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 -na. Who catches it? NADP forming reduced NADP. Then you take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the dark reaction or the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction. Right now I want to back it up before we do that. When we take the water, break it in half, oxygen and electrons, right? The two electrons came from hydrogen. Oxygen is gone, right? Water is H2O. The O is out there, okay? The hydrogen ions gave up each, the hydrogen atoms gave up their electrons those ions sweep, sweep, went inside the green thylakoid pancakes. Remember that? Follow pancakes? 
So when they go, and then the PQ is a membrane along the edge of those green hollow pancakes yeah. that are bringing even more hydrogen ions. So that's why when those hydrogen ions go back out into the stroma, that's when you make Take some ATP. ATP. Got that part? Okay. Take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the reaction or the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction. 3C5. Who is that? RUDP. <coughs> okay, so yes. We don't really mean that. Just on the down Okay, 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Now pause right there. The 3C5 is RUDP, right? The 3C1 is carbon dioxide. Now we want carbon dioxide to hook up with RUBP because we're gonna eventually mold that around to make sugar, right? But sometimes RUBP is naughty and is tempted by the fruit of the other. And what is she tempted by? Oxygen. Oxygen. If oxygen connects with RUBP, that process is called photorespiration. And that is bad. So how do we protect RUBP? There's two strategies, okay? One is a separation in space, and one is a separation in time. The space are C4 plants. They hide their dark reaction, calcitonium the reaction. They hide their, that reaction, the light independent reaction, away and insulate it with other cells. And there's a compound called PEP who escorts the CO2 in so that RUVP never gets tempted by oxygen. So it's like having your room um, like at a hotel or something, right? And you the or I don't know. It's like a closet. It's like a closet. Okay, so there's your bedroom door, that's the insulator. Your bedroom is the insulating cells, and then your closet is where the dark reactions are taking place. And and the CO2 gets so it's you keep the dark reaction in the closet so it only gets the CO2 and PEP is the thing that brings it in there. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Another strategy is to fix CO2 at night. That's a separation in time. Okay? Can plants. Okay? Can plants. So at night they have their stomata open and PEP is fixing CO2, fixing it, fixing it, fixing it. So during the daytime, you know, they don't have to have a closet. They can they have CO2 right there in the bedroom on they can just release the CO2 all day long so it's never tempted by oxygen. Got that? So ways to avoid photorespiration. I spent two minutes talking about it. I bet somebody has a question about it. That's what I'm guessing, okay? All right, so then um, let's start at the beginning with the Calvin cycle. 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Break down to 6C3. Use some ATP. Use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away, PJL, so we're taking away half of the glucose right there, or G3P, and you're left with 5C3, use some ATP to build 3C5 plus 3C1, mix 3C6, break down to 6C3. Use some ATP, use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away. Now we have a glucose. <coughs> and you're left with 5C3. Use some ATP to build 3C5. Stop. Okay, howdy doody. What else do you want to do? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, with weight. Okay, go ahead. Every turn, you make a half of a glucose, which is PGAL or G3P. When you're done with two turns, you could make a glucose because you have two halves of glucose. Okay, what else? What else do you want to review? Yes. Uh, can I just say that the 
Yes, I can. That would be a great thing to go over. Let's go over it now. What's the whole thing called? Cellular respiration. What's the first thing called? Glycolysis. Same with authority. Glycolysis. Who does it? All cells. What do they do? Where do they do it? In the cytoplasm. What do you start out with? Glucose. How many carbons? Six. What are you going to do? Break it in half. How many steps? Ten. How many enzymes? Ten. What are these called? Two pyruvic acids. And you. Reduce some NAD and make some ATP. Two, this, this makes me want to say something, maybe because I'm the author of the test. Do you know the difference between reduce and oxidize? No. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that one. Okay, if I reduce, why are you calling me reduce? Because I'm reduced in? Oxidation. Well, electrons. Well, you don't have I'm reduced in charge because I have a lot of oh, electrons. So would you be okay, wait, I'll read it, okay? I'm reduced in charge because I have a lot of electrons. But what do electrons give me? Energy. Power, energy. Now, how can I get myself reduced? Who can I hook up with to get myself reduced? Hydrogen. Hydrogen, Hydrogen is my good friend who always gladly gives me up their electrons. Who do I need to get away from if I want to be reduced? Oxygen. Okay? So it's a way of transferring energy. When you reduce something, okay, if I reduce something, okay, when I get reduced, or sorry, when she gets reduced, I'm getting what? Oxidized. She's gaining electrons. She's gaining energy. How is she doing that? Let's say I'm hydrogen. Because I'm hydrogen, she's gaining it. Or if I was oxygen, I'm leaving her electrons alone and going away, and that has reduced her. Okay? Oxidized is the opposite. Oxidized is when you burn something. Okay? You oxidize glucose through the process of cellular respiration. <coughs> you take apart glucose, and you give the energy temporarily to NAD. Reduce some NAD. And make some ATP, too, right? So I take the energy out of the glucose and I give it to NAD. Now NAD has the energy. He'll take it to the top of the BTC. Then he'll drop off the electrons. Now he doesn't have the energy. It's like you're passing the energy around. Glucose had the energy. Now NAD has the energy. Now the electron transport chain has the energy. And when it na 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 na, it uses the energy to put hydrogen ions reductase. Reductase. Cytochrome oxidase to one side of a membrane. So now we've transferred that energy into a difference in a membrane. Now it's going to come back in, right? And when it comes back in through ATP synthase complex, we're going to take that energy and make money, ATP. Okay, when they say follow the money, it's follow the energy. So we oxidize the energy out of glucose, give it to NAD. NAD gives it to the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain gives it to a membrane and creates more hydrogen ions on one side. It comes back across and makes ATP. Do you understand the big picture? Sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> if this is the first time you've thought about it since I taught it to you, I can see how that would be overwhelming. Okay. All right, so reduced <coughs> oxidized. Could you go watch a video about being reduced and oxidized? You could. Could you go back and look at the lecture notes and the group shared notes about reduced oxidized? Yes, you could, right? I think it's probably in the third unit, I think, right? Okay, so let's go again. Glucose, what are we gonna do? Break it down, how many steps? 10, how many enzymes? 10, what are these called? Two pyruvic acids, and you reduce some NAD and make some ATP. Two. Oh, we have plenty of oxygen. What should we do? Aerobic respiration. What's the next step called? Transition. Transition prep. prep. Here we go. And you reduce some NAD and two acetyl CoA put one away. What's the next step called? Prep cycle. cycle. How many times are we going to do it? Twice. Why? Because two acetyl CoA. Yeah. Have we made a little bit of ATP so far? Yeah, we made two in glycolysis, right? We didn't make any in transition. We'll make a couple when we're done with these, but we're really going to make most of the ATP during our PGC. Here we go. Two plus four is six. Do the bit, get five. Do the bit, get four. Make an ATP, reduce an FAD, reduce an NAD, and two plus four is six. Do the bit, pause. What does it mean to do with the bit? CO2 and reducing energy. It's like you're doing transition, right? 
Okay, do that second part again. <coughs> two plus four <coughs> is six. Do the bit, get five. Do the bit, get four. Make an ATB, reduce an FAD, reduce an NAD, and stop. Gather all your reduced NADs and FADs and take them to the top of the ETC. Uh uh. What are the uh uh? Some are strong and they get to come in at the top. And FADs are weak and they come in a little bit lower. So they don't make as much ATP. Remember grandma check, aunt check? Mm -hmm. Yes? How does it like actually make the ATP when it goes to the ETC? Okay, so when we na 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 na, the electrons get passed through the membrane. Remember how we went, mm, I've got power because I've got the electrons? Remember? And yeah. we boiled the hydrogen. That's how it does it. So it puts hydrogen ions on one side of the membrane. And remember how we talked about entropy? Remember entropy? disorganization, we're always fighting disorganization, and we're making it really organized when we gather it on one side of on the membrane, yeah. And so when it goes back through, it goes back powerfully, because it's like you're holding back the water in a dam. So it's like, you know, if you had a dam and you had all the water on one side and it wants to go back through, you have all the hydrogen ions on one side, it wants to go back through. When it goes back through, it spins a little turnstile, just like going into Disneyland, ATP synthase complex, and you make that snap that phosphate on and go from being ADP to ATP. Is the ATP synthase complex because that's something that uses all the oxygen, like 95% of the oxygen, or like 75 The bottom of the electron transport chain, the final electron acceptor is oxygen forming water. So if you don't have oxygen there, your chain doesn't keep moving. If your chain doesn't move, then you have nothing. The, the chain, think of it as the thing that's pumping the water to one side of the dam. Think of it like that. Gather all your reduced NADs and FADs and take them to the top of the ETC. Uh uh. Na 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 na. na. Reductase, reductase, cytochrome oxidase, and you make some ATP. A lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it, or a lot of it, a lot of it. Who catches electrons at the bottom? Oxygen forming water. Water, 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 water. 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 Now you understand it? First time. Well, there you go. It's better late than never, brother. Okay, what else? Here I am. Standing like a honored bio teacher. Do you know that song? I changed it for you because I want to help you. You have a quiz to make up. Yes, I do. Okay, do you want to make it up at the beginning or do you want to, what do you want, tell me what you want to do? Because I'm still reviewing. Can I, I want to go to the, uh, you go to that, we can do it at the beginning class. Okay. No problem. Oh, okay. thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's just like a tunnel with a tunnel, like a turnstile at the end. And so when the hydrogen ions are on one side, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a mitochondria or a chloroplast, okay? When you have a membrane that acts as a barrier and there's a way out, the hydrogen wants to use that way out. It wants to go from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. There's a difference in charge, there's a difference in pH, and there's a difference in concentration. So it is motivated. Things tend to go from higher energy to lower, and it's going to accomplish it going through that. But in the process, it's like it's turning a little physical turnstile, just like if we could harvest the turnstile at every Dodger game or every Disneyland function where you went through a turnstile, we could use that to build something. And that's how you, one by one, make all your ATP molecules that you burn. Okay, what else? What else may I help uh, you with? Any other topics? Confuse it? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay, um, like adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, what part yeah, do you want me to go over? DNA and RNA. Differences between and DNA and RNA? Sure, okay. So, as one of the four important organic molecules, that kind of thing? Okay, so here's DNA. Here's RNA. So DNA is double-stranded. RNA is single-stranded. Single-stranded. DNA has the sugar, what? Deoxyribose. Whereas RNA sugar is just ribose. Um, the nitrogenous bases. Um, are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. 
and the nitrogenous bases in RNA are adenine, uracil, that's the difference, guanine, and cytosine. DNA is your genetic code, and RNA is what you use to produce um, proteins using the genetic code. The RNA are the workers to generate um, proteins. Yes? You don't have to know how to draw it, but it's possible, it's really highly likely that you would have to name for me the four important organic molecules and what each is built out of and a function. So nucleic acids is one of those. What's the third nucleic acid? ATP. ATP. What are the other three important organic molecules? Carbohydrates, Carbohydrates which are built out of? Sugars, and you know some simple sugars for me, right? Glucose, fructose, and galactose, right? And then um, you know some complex carbohydrates. Some are used for structure. Some are used for energy. What are the structural carbohydrates? Chitin, which is what? Fungal cell walls and arthropod exoskeletons. What else? What's another one? Cellulose, plant cell walls, good job, okay? What's one that's used for energy? Glycogen is stored in your liver, and starch is for how plants store energy, right? Okay, so we did carbohydrates, we've done nucleic acid, what's, what's another one? Lipids. Lipids. Lipids, there are two types of lipids. What are the two types of lipids? Steroids and fats. Fats are built out of? Glycerol, three fatty acid chains. Those fatty acid chains could be saturated or unsaturated. Where do you find saturated fats? In animals and unsaturated plants. And the other type of lipid was what? Steroids. Steroids, and those are made out of four, four rings, four carbon rings. What's the fourth important organic molecule? Oh, okay. Proteins, and proteins are built out of amino acids. They have an amino group, right? NH2 or 3. They have a carboxyl group, C double bond OOH. They have a hydrogen, and then they have 20 different possible, what kind of groups? R, R groups. And you hook amino acids together, the peptide bonds, in order to form a protein. In fact, all polymers are built by what kind of reaction? Dehydration synthesis, another name for it is condensation synthesis. And they're broken apart by what? Hydrolysis. What else would you like to talk about? Go in here? No. Yes? Um, what are some important labs like, that we can get? All of them. <laughs> yes? Can you go over the geological time scale? I can. I can go over the geological time scale. Every single time I draw it, I do a cruddy job, but let's try. OK, so what's most time? In the beginning of time, it's what? Precambrian Pre time. And what does that go from? 4.6 to what? 548. 548 what? Million years. Okay, this is Precambrian. What's this, what's this time period? Paleozoic. And it goes till how many millions of years? 248. And then what's the next one? Mesozoic. And it goes till when? 65 million years ago. Good. And then what era are we in now? Cenozoic to now. Cenozoic. Okay, let's do some plants. Or actually, let's generalize. Here we would say at 3.6 billion years, what happened? First cell. First cell. That would be accurate, right? Okay. And then we talked, uh, did I give you 2.3 as oxygen revolution? Yeah? Okay. And so when we start off here, plant wise, by the time we're at the end of this, what do we have plant wise? Algae. Algae. And we go all the way up from some simple plants. And we end right here, and we have early what? No, plants, plants. 
gymnosperms. And then this goes all the way up to early what? Angiosperms. Angiosperm, gymnosperms are like Christmas trees and Hanukkah bushes. And angiosperms are like what? Flowers. Okay, and then we go all the way up to herbs. I don't want to hear about it. Okay, now let's do what color haven't I not used? Black, green, blue, what's animal? Red. We go from invertebrates. Where do we go next? Good. Vertebrates, where do we go next? Fish, where do we go next? Amphibians, where do we go next? Early reptiles. Good. And then we go all the way up to what? Early mammals. Not like we're the cool ma mammal. And then all the way up to man. Okay, I'm, that's okay. I'm good with that. Okay, what else? Yes. Oh, you're going to have those right in this area. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's because it's like right there, you're like early reptiles. And this, this is when reptiles become dominant, right? So that's why I said... Imagine like a dinosaur, that little arm, a dinosaur running around a Christmas tree. That's your Mesozoic era. And here, this is where you have this big explosion of life right here. A lot of life happens here. Okay, what, what else? Time to go. Anything else you want me to go over? One more minute. Okay, are you glad you came? Yes. Okay. Make good choices. Make sure you sleep. Know that I love you. I want you to do well. Oh, yes, yeah, right. Make good choices.